It has been over a year since Star Wars released, and there are certainly a huge amount of characters in the game right now. Since a lot has changed, it is time for us to revisit the most timeless characters that we have in Star Rail in order to help you decide who is the best invested, at least up till 2024 so far. Disclaimer though, this video is purely my opinion and my own observation. I try my best to end up with a conclusion that I have, so yeah, just do keep that in mind. And without further ado, here's a list of 10 characters that have withstood the test of time. I'll be mentioning the 4 star first though, and then only the 5 stars. With all that said, the first character on my list will be Tingyun. Tingyun has been the actual grandma of Star Rail Man. Being already available on release, she has walked a long way. She was touted as a top tier harmony buffer back in the day, but even till this day, she is only ever replaced by powerful 5 star buffers. Even considering that there are still 0 cycle clears in MOC that can utilize Tingyun, plus a lot of low cycle clears right now that may use Tingyun with say Yun Li. Just to name a pairing off my head. That's certainly always been solid, and yeah, a fairly timeless character indeed, considering the general usability of regenerating energy on her ultimate. And that marks the end of the first character on the list. Nothing too much to really explain of her, I'm sure I understand. Moving on with the list, the next character I have would be a fellow 4 star as well in Pella. Just like Tingyun, Pella is also a grandmother, considering we already have her since release. And to a point, she is claimable for completely free even. Such an accessible character that everybody has, yet she's still still one of the strongest death shredder in the entire game today. Her best value comes with how she can be skill point positive whilst inflicting very valuable defense reduction that amplifies your damage by a lot. A really prominent example would be a modern day boot hill team with Pella can have comparable performance to a boot hill team with Ron May. That is just how great Pella can be especially when used against suitable weaknesses. Though she isn't racked in a lot of tier lists as the highest tier anymore, she has never been a bad character in all of Star Wars for sure. Certainly worth every penny to put in Pella. With Pella out the Way now, let's move on to the next character we have the list, which will be Gallagher. Now, this guy. This guy didn't just be fairly timeless. Bro, stocks just go up even today. As a break healer in a meta that favors break effect a bunch, Gallagher is benefiting heavily from just how the game is built around. Though it has been about seven months since we are introduced with Gallagher, Star Wars as a whole really did focus on break effect characters throughout all that period. And for that obvious reason, Gallagher is still very strong today. Not to mention with Gallagher's ability to land multiple debuffs, he even helps out Acheron, even helps out activating Pioneer set as well for any other DPS in the game. Being able to cleanse debuffs, healing the team, and break both singular and multiple enemies very well, he's the perfect package that can even rival a 5 star healer in Ling Sha for offensive capabilities. This guy has been dominating for a while even as a 4 star healer. However though, who knows if the meta will shift soon. I can't imagine the game keep going on a route of break effect for too much longer to be honest, but for now, Gallagher is going strong considering the enemy in MOC 12 are all weak to fire. Even if they are not, there's always a firefly that can plant fire weakness. So yeah, W Gallagher. Continuing on with the list, we will be finally getting into our 5 stars, which will start with our good old Fushad. She's been around for a year and she is still the only reliable sustain when I run out of ideas, dude. The simple reason being, with her in the team, I just don't die. She takes all the aggressive damage, she gets me an instance of immunity to debuffs, she heals the team, and she also isn't skill point hungry. She even gets me crit rate as well, like, even today I still think she gives me too much, Jesus. But yeah, nothing too much to say about her. I think every Fushia player can still easily use Fushia today in any game mode, albeit she's no longer the best considering break effect is too much favored right now. However though, she will always be the person that you go to when you tell yourself, oh crap, I don't know who to use here, just like a Nokia, the never dying gremlin. And with that, enough about Fushred. Up next, we have yet another sustain. And it will be a Ventry, which currently has a rerun batter. Honestly, he's only around for about 6 months right now, which isn't the longest on this list, but considering his value has increased a bunch with time, I think it deserves to be mentioned here. You'll also notice as well, everyone in this list so far is a sustain of some sort or a support, which does tell you how important these roles are for your account. With a Ventry, you get your obvious shield, he can be used in any team, but he becomes a literal beast in a follow-up attack team for sure. Especially with the addition of Faceyao, a Ventry's follow-up attack frequency has expanded in value 
by a ton. By using aim in a team of a lot of instances of attacks, you can practically use zero skill points in the inventory and have unlimited shields considering he simply does recharge every couple of attacks your team does. On top of all of that, he does give it a lot of FRS, a debuff as well on his ultimate, and overall he doesn't just do no damage even, so a sustain that can truly do a lot of things. He's never fallen off of higher tiers, so yes, rejoice adventure and enjoy it. Moving forward, we will have our first real DPS in the game on this list, and it will be Akron. Akron has been around for a while, and honestly, she only recently seen any form of decline in terms of performance. Though I say that, she's still considered high tier in MOC and usable pretty much everywhere else. And yeah, it's pretty obvious, I'm pretty sure I understand. She's just a character that has crazy high damage ever since her release. She's easy to use as well, with the only criteria being application of debuffs. And there are a lot of characters that does that for sure. So far at the end of the year, she is still the only reliable DPS to go for, at least in one of the endgame modes for me. The damage that she does and the simplistic way to use her is just all of the reasons why I'm still using Akron, along with a lot of others as well. Truly a timeless DPS indeed. Now that we touched on a DPS though, I do also have to mention Firefly here, which honestly, she has only been around for 4 months, so I'd say let's let her marinate for a bit longer and see if she can truly withstand the test of time. And yeah, with the pure DPS out the way, let's move on to the list with a supporter, which we will be going for, Opaz, the Queen of Investment. And honestly, yeah, that is her entire lore too, because think about it, she started as someone who is considered niche back in the day and is only pulled for someone in the future. And ever since then, more and more follow-up attack characters did get released and even till recently, we had the strongest follow-up DPS in face. Yeah, obviously that just made Topaz better and better. And well, I'm proud to spam my Topaz whenever I'm poised to use the face yell team today. The best part is, she should get even better than now as long as more follow-up attackers are released in the future. An investment that truly only pays off, dude. Next up on the list, we'll be going back to some supportive characters, which would be Huo Huo. This little one may look like she's about to lose cautious, but she is mighty. In my opinion, the main reason why she's great is mainly for her constant debuff cleansing. The game is evolved to the point where every boss or elite has something to control or debuff you, which does make someone like Huo Huo increasingly more valuable because there simply isn't anyone else in the game that can cleanse debuff as often as Huo Huo can. And even if there were, Huo Huo is still coming with a kit that allows her to energy regen as well, and that will never let you down, right? With a mix of all of that, she's still my most used sustain today, and yep, it feels safe with Huo Huo, she gets you out of control, a year in now, and she's still doing very well. And to close out the rest of the list at once, because it is 8am and I did not sleep last night, if you're a student, you would tell in my commentaries, like, from a person that is dizzy. My well-being aside though, I've kept the best for last. I know I mentioned this isn't arranged in any order, but I actually think I would rank these two as top two for sure. And the two people here is clearly Ronmei and Robin. Yeah, pretty obvious, right? Like, who did not see this one coming? Ronmei is certainly around for a year now, but Robin's only around for over six months. However, though, if I'm being honest, it straight up don't matter since they're both just so cracked that I bet they're going to still be valuable for a long time. Now, there are debates on say, what if the coming Sunday just ruins the meta buffers, which I suppose is possible, but I don't think it's that probable, though. Surely Hoyo doesn't just do that, no? But hey, that is in the future. In any case, for now, though, Robin and Ranmei, being the only reliable AoE buffers in the game, is just too rare and too important for their respective team comps. On top of that, even, they are still versatile, where you can use them in any team and expect decent results. Something like a Robin and Kafka team is what dot users use a bunch. And yeah, I'm sure you know what they do by now, and I'm sure you are also using them non-stop yourselves too. So yeah, not really too much to say. And that will be the end of my list of timeless characters in Star Wars so far at the end of 2024. Now the real interesting part would be the people that didn't make this list, right? Now I'm pretty sure I definitely missed a person or two that could also be on the list, but I definitely think there are characters that should have will never be on the list. For example, like Sela, that is no longer even near as prominent as before. We also clearly have someone like Jingliu that isn't ever dominant these days too. But in the end though, I feel like that is just a normal growth of the game where some characters will be replaced, some characters will get better or worse, but at the very least, there are still 4 stars and a lot more free to play characters that are very strong in the meta today. I think that is very good, at least we don't have to just pull for new batters over and over again, and with our old characters being just all useless, right? And yeah, we'll see what happens with the coming Sunday though. He might just be insanely broken to the point where the whole meta changes, but we'll have to see. But yep, that will be all. It's 9am now and I have not slept for 20 hours, so I gotta go now. Take care.